okay so in the last class what we have discussed uh, is uh, how from uh, fourier last few class probably i should say how from fourier series towards fourier transform so that means uh, we have a energy signal from there uh, means uh, we have a power signal from there we get fourier series that is something we have already explored and then if uh, instead of uh, energy means uh, power signal we have a non periodic signal that is energy signal which is time bounded for that how do we actually evaluate uh, the frequency components so what we have seen that uh, whenever uh, means we have put a trick over there so instead of uh, means uh, doing the analysis completely uh, in a new fashion we have actually borrowed the idea from fourier series so what we did we have uh, taken a time period which is bigger than the existence of the signal so that means if the signal is uh, defined from let's say a to b uh, we have taken the time period as uh, a time period which includes that entire thing and then we started repeating this signal the entire signal so what was happening the uh, targeted signal was repeated uh, over that period t if i say this is t and then we said uh, that immediately if i start repeating it up to time plus infinity and minus infinity so immediately it becomes a uh, again uh, power signal okay uh, and it's a periodic signal so we can get fourier series accordingly and then we started stretching this t to infinity so immediately we could see that uh, we were getting a fourier transform case so we have given interpretation of fourier transform what exactly it means so if uh, for a signal gt we get a fourier transform which is gf what's the meaning of that we have said that uh, at any frequency uh, f uh, the value of gf is not actually the spectrum co component as it was for our discrete fourier series case so we have told that that generally gives me zero but if i just multiply gf with some del f okay then within this del f how much frequency component is there that can be actually evaluated so that is why gf is called as spectral density because gf del f is almost similar to that dn and then gf del f divided by del f is actually giving me gf okay so that means dn by del f so this is actually the spectrum divided by the frequency part so it becomes spectral density so this is something we have already discussed okay so we have given some interpretation about that gf what does that mean now what we wish to do uh, is now from here to measurement we have already defined that energy or power is kind of measurement for us okay that's almost like in vector also we get the distance of a vector which is measurement we have shown that similarly if we just integrate either g square t or mod g t square we get energy okay and correspondingly if it is a power signal then we can calculate evaluate power uh, just dividing by time and stretching the time up to infinity okay so we'll now try to get into the uh, energy or power of a particular signal so our target is similar to what we have done we have also uh, evaluated the uh, power of a periodic signal right that's something we have already uh, talked about and we have uh, given the equivalence uh, means power calculation theorem which is called percival's power theorem okay so similar theorem will be trying to derive for a time limited signal or a energy signal so let's try to see if i have a signal gt okay which is time bounded okay so the signal can be anything i am just taking this signal it might be of any nature so it might be of this nature uh, defined between some finite amount of time okay so if i just take that gt i wish to now evaluate the energy of this signal okay so you might be saying okay it's it's very easy we already have defined this particular thing so it's all about integrating mod gt square dt right or if it is a real signal then it's just integrating g square t dt right so this is our means this happens when the signal is real 
this happens when the signal is complex right or we can write that mod g t square as g t g star t d t right. So, what we will do? We will probably take the more generic definition, which is the complex signal definition, uh, because complex signal already uh, takes the real part, right. Uh, if it is real, then g star t will be g t, and immediately we get g square t, right. So, for that case, I wish to evaluate this. You might be asking, so this is my energy. You might be asking this is by definition already we have defined this. We have also from the definition of uh, uh, Fourier series and Fourier transform we have already defined that this, this should be the energy right. So, this is something was already derived. So, what we are targeting now like what we have done in Percival theorem uh, for Fourier series we wish to also define energy from the frequency spectrum this is what we are seeing from the time ok. So, g t has equivalent Fourier transform let us say that is g f because g t is a band li uh, time limited signal. So, it must have a corresponding Fourier transform which is well defined ok as long as g t has some uh, property that we have discussed already. So, g f is already defined. So, I want to see in the frequency domain can we evaluate the power or energy similarly. So, for this signal because it is a time limited, so it should be an energy signal, so we will be interested in energy. So, let us try to see if we can define that thing. So, what we can do is something like this. We have already talked about inverse Fourier transform ok. So, in that inverse Fourier transform we have said g t is represented as long as g f is known it is minus infinity plus infinity g f e to the power plus j 2 pi f t d f right. So, that is the theorem we have proven already that is the inverse Fourier transform. So, this g star t will be replacing by this ok. So, it will be one integration over f g f of course, because we have to take complex conjugate because this is g t we need to get g star t. So, g star t will be g star f and it will be there will be a minus sign over here. So, I can replace it by that. So, it will be g star f e to the power minus j 2 pi f t d f right. No problem in that whatever we have derived so far we are just using those things. So, uh, because we want to take it to frequency domain that is why we are applying this inverse Fourier transform. So, the time domain signal I am actually representing it through inverse Fourier transform to frequency domain signal, but so far I have only succeeded in replacing one of them of course, the dt should be still there. So, this is where we have replaced g star t ok. We have to see what happens to this g t. Now, let us see this integration limit ok. So, they are not dependent on each other. So, I can always flip these two integration. So, I can take the frequency integration outside. So, whatever terms which involve only frequency I can take that outside. So, g square f will be uh, sorry g star f will be there inside the time integration should be there where g t is already there e to the power minus j 2 pi f t this is also a uh, thing which is dependent on time. So, I cannot take that outside that integration. So, d t integration is being done first and then d f right. No problem I have just rearranged it and I am allowed to do that rearranging because the limits are not dependent on each other ok. And uh, whichever functions are dependent on both f and t I have not taken them out. So, I have done all the things correctly. So, now let us see what happens over here. Can you identify this thing? So, it is it is it is actually the Fourier transform of g t. We have already defined that ok. So, and we have derived that. So, this is Fourier transform of g t therefore, this must be g f. So, that is g f d f. So, basically what has happened we have started the definition of energy from time domain and eventually we could get into frequency domain of the same energy. So, what happens in frequency domain it is nothing but mod g f square d f right. So, basically 
in frequency domain now you can see also what is happening my gf might be a complex term we have seen that already it might have a phase component it might have an amplitude component what here we are doing because we are measuring a real quantity eg so basically we are taking the formula says that i must take the modulus of gf which is real again and square of that i integrate over the entire frequency domain whatever i get back that is actually energy so in the frequency domain whatever pattern i am getting this mod gf square if i plot okay so uh, suppose this is frequency and i am plotting this uh, i have a corresponding gt let's say that gt looks like this and i am plotting mod gf square which will be eventually looking like this okay so you will later on see if gt is this box function it becomes sin square okay uh, so sin x by x square of that okay so it looks like this so if my gt is this i plot this is actually mod gf square this i call it as energy spectral density or est why it is called so because first of all if you integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity that means all the frequency component you are actually trying to evaluate something which is mod gf square i still don't know what that is okay so if i integrate that i get the overall energy good and if i suppose try to see what are the frequency component it has or a measurable quantity of some frequency component it has if i try to see that what i'll be doing i'll be passing this through a band pass filter very narrow band pass filter of let's say a band pass filter centered around fc and with this one as delta f so the filter if you correctly plot that it will the transfer function will look like this so it will have in the plus fc there will be a flat band where it will pass every frequency and minus fc also because of the symmetric nature in fourier transform so it will have something okay so if i pass this what will happen i will have a multiplication of these two right so immediately what i'll get only at that frequency this mod gf square will exist because it will just pass and in all other frequency it will be zero and then if i just try to see that suppose the band is over here let's say so what i'll get i'll just get the same almost similar pattern over here and if i just now integrate what i should expect now that in those frequency band how much power it has okay so in that del f because the overall power is if i integrate it fully now i'm passing it through filter filter will be passing only on that band whatever it has exactly as it is so if i now after passing through filter if i now wish to calculate the energy that must be those frequency component energy because those are only getting passed through this filter so that frequency component energy is becoming just the integration of this mod gf square over that frequency band so this is the reason why this is called energy spectral density because what is happening for a particular frequency band how much energy is there that's being characterized by this mod gf square okay if you just target a particular frequency at that frequency just if you take only that frequency you won't get any energy because if you integrate it will be zero right because i don't have uh, any space to integrate it's just a uh, on a point i'm trying to do integration so that will be zero because their del f is zero if i allow some del f i'll be immediately getting some amount of energy and that energy characterizes that at that frequency if del f is sufficiently small at that frequency around that how much energy per unit band it has because it is integration of that that means if this del f is sufficiently small it will be almost flat right and then the value of mod gf square into del f because it's almost flat it can be approximated as flat 
So if this is drawn like this, and I have chosen a very small this one. So you can see the top is almost flat. If I make my del f tending to 0. So then the overall energy will be this mod g f square almost similar concept into del f. Of course, because it is two side band, two sided, so it should be 2 into that okay, because I will be getting uh, same thing in both the sides. Okay, so if I just ignore this 2 because this will be always there, whichever band I choose it will be always there. So what is happening if I divide this by del f, okay, so I get to see that par unit band okay, because I am dividing it by frequency this mod g f square is actually giving me the energy per unit band. So, that is why it is called energy spectral density because mod g f square gives me an idea that at any frequency I choose per unit band how much energy is being there in that signal. So, it actually characterizes the overall signal because we have told that this energy is a measurement. So, it characterizes the overall signal it just says every frequency term how much energy or means uh, spectral density I should not say spectrum it should be spectral density how much spectral density it has at that targeted frequency okay. because it characterizes that so that is another way of characterizing the whole signal okay. so that is the importance or significance of this so we have now got some measurement or measurable quantity in the frequency domain as well because we have now defined two uh, separate domain for representing a signal one is the time domain another one is the frequency domain. Now we have got a uh, frequency domain representation of measurable quantity which is energy okay, or energy spectral density that is something we have got. Now we will introduce another thing okay. so that is that if I have a signal g t so this is gt how do i get my energy spectral density the technique is very simple first do a fourier transform okay so whenever i do a fourier transform i'll be getting corresponding mod gf square right means first i'll be getting gf and then from that gf i can calculate the mod gf square so that becomes my energy spectral density this is one one way of evaluating energy spectral density but I would say uh, most of the time the helpful one is not this one. Okay. So, we will try to see the what is the other method to actually evaluate energy spectral density. So, for that we will try to define a particular term which is called time autocorrelation function. what is time autocorrelation function so suppose i have a time bounded signal gt it might be like this it might be anything but bounded in time okay so this gt if i multiply with a either advanced or delayed version of that same signal so it might be t plus tau let's say it's advanced by tau amount of time and if i integrate this over the entire time okay so i take a signal so it might be this signal and then probably this means actually it will be delayed okay so it will be uh, shifted backwards so if i just shift it by this amount so this is actually tau and then i'll multiply these two so this is gt and this is g t plus tau. Okay. If I multiply these two signal and start integrating it we are saying this is we are just defining it. Okay. Right now probably you won't appreciate why we are defining this but later on you will see that this has a big implication in communication of signal processing. So, we are defining this as phi g tau of course we are integrating it over t so the tau will remain so it is a function of tau for different values of tau this integration will be different you can see already if I, I put a tau which is sufficiently large than this particular uh, duration of this signal then it will become 0 whereas here it is not 0 it has a overlapping part 
okay. So, it depends on of course, this will be dependent on tau whatever tau I choose. So, it is a function of tau. Okay. So, this is our time autocorrelation function. First of all, let us see some property of it. We will we'll later on link this to something of our interest and then you will appreciate why we are defining this. But let, let us first try to characterize this particular signal. So, first thing we wish to prove is that it is a event symmetric function. So, let us say my definition was this. Okay. Now, let us substitute t plus tau as z. Okay. So, what will happen to t that should be z minus tau right and d t will be tau is a constant. So, d t will be for this integration tau is a constant. So, d t will be d z. So, this phi g tau should be minus infinity plus infinity g t g. Okay. So, now we have to do the substitution. So, t will become g z minus tau and t plus tau will become g z and this become t z right. So, again z is just a dummy variable I can replace that as t. So, it will become minus infinity plus infinity g t g t minus tau d t. Just think about this and this this definition. What is happening? If this is phi g tau, okay, this is actually phi g minus tau by this definition because if tau is replaced by minus tau, this automatically becomes. So, if I just replace tau by minus tau, this becomes phi g minus tau which is exactly equivalent to this particular thing. But this is equal to this therefore, this must be equal to this. So, I can see my phi g tau is a event symmetric function because the negative of means tau if I replace by minus tau I get the same value. So, it is a event symmetric function right. Okay. Next the most important thing that I will be doing. So, now what I wish to do is I wish to take the Fourier transform of this one. It will be very clear after some time that why I am doing this. Okay. So, right now I am just doing it. Okay. So, I wish to take the Fourier transform of this particular signal right phi g tau. Of course, when I am saying that I am taking a Fourier transform my uh, Fourier transform is actually transforming it from tau domain to some other domain. Okay. Let us call that as f domain. So, it is no longer the t domain because here the means independent variable is tau. So, Fourier transform should be on tau. So, let us put that Fourier transform. Fourier transform means I have to put the function. So, which is nothing but minus infinity plus infinity g t g t plus tau d t right. So, this is my whole signal that has to be Fourier transform okay. into e to the power minus j 2 pi f t sorry f tau because the variable is now tau d tau integration minus infinity plus infinity. So, that is the Fourier transform right. So, let us now try to see if we can evaluate this again. I will do a means change of this integration because they are not dependent on each other the limits are not dependent. So, I can I can keep the t integration out and put the tau integration inside. So, whichever is free of tau that will be going out. So, g t goes out. So, I have minus infinity plus infinity g t plus tau e to the power minus j 2 pi f tau d tau right. So, this is something which is there inside. Okay. Now, I will just do again same trick t plus tau I will replace as some y let us say. Okay. So, immediately what do we get? 
minus infinity to plus infinity g t now minus infinity to plus infinity this is becoming my y so g y ok. Now tau is a variable so tau must be and for this integration t is a constant because this integration is over tau ok. So t is actually a constant for that integration. So I should not bother about t so tau becomes y minus t right. So this becomes e to the power minus j 2 pi f y into e to the power plus j 2 pi f t right ok. I have just replaced tau by y minus t. So y that minus is there and minus t becomes plus ok and dt right. So this is that integration and now let us see for this particular integration inside this is a constant term ok because it has nothing dependent on tau. So I can take that out. right what I have is and of course I should also say d tau because t is constant so that should be replaced by dy and the integration uh, because it is minus infinity plus infinity that is not changing. So now I have got g y e to the power minus j 2 pi f y dy minus infinity plus infinity dt outside what is this? that is actually Fourier transform of G. If I know already the Fourier transform suppose G t or any variable G y whatever it is because transform takes it to another domain. So this is G f suppose. So that must be because y is just a dummy variable I can put y as treat y as t. So I will be getting G f over here right. So I can immediately write this as minus infinity plus infinity G t e to the power minus j 2 pi f t this becomes g f d t hmm. oh there should be sorry this was plus this term was plus that mistaken here I have written minus fine. Now what is happening? G f is no longer a function of t I can take that out G f goes out what I am left with g t e to the power plus j 2 pi f t d t right. If this was minus then I could have got a Fourier transform right. So I can forcefully put a minus over here and then I have to put minus f over here right. So immediately what happens? this is the Fourier transform of whatever is there inside. So that should be g minus f. So I can write g f into g minus f right. We have also proven that Fourier transform is even symmetric. So g minus f is nothing but the co complex conjugate of g f. So g minus f is actually g star f. I can put that as g f into g star f. Now you can see the beauty of it. So what has happened? I have started with autocorrelation function. This is why I defined autocorrelation function because I knew that autocorrelation function if I take Fourier transform I will be getting my uh, getting back my energy spectral density. So this is and that is why we were telling that there is another way of defining energy spectral density. It is just you take first instead of taking directly Fourier transform you will see why that is required. You take first you take the signal you take the autocorrelation of that ok and then you do Fourier transform and immediately you get back your autocorrelation function. Later on you will see this is actually the famous winner kinchin relationship. Of course we have done that only for time autocorrelation this has winner kinchin theorem has higher implication. When we study about random process you will see that it, it gets also related to that ok. So uh, this is but right now we should be satisfied with that if you just take a signal single signal do not uh, think about randomness uh, in it a single defined signal if I take a time autocorrelation 
okay, and do a Fourier transform on that, I get back my energy spectral density, the way we have defined energy spectral density. Earlier we have already defined what is energy spectral density. So now with time autocorrelation function, we are getting back the energy spectral density. What we will do next is, this was done for a energy signal, we will do the same thing for power signal and then we will try to interpret why this is so much important, okay. why we have to take this detour path where we have to do evaluate the time autocorrelation function and then try to take Fourier transform. We will try to give a simple example where you will see that Fourier transform is not good enough, just directly taking Fourier transform might not be good enough. 